Hello. So in this video, we are going to configure the dynamic routing and the topology is the same that we had used for uh, static routing. We have three routers over here. Two of them are Junos and the one is Cisco. And though this, this topology is kind of small for dynamic routing, but even if you scale it up, the concept remains the same. If we had, and, and, and while we are configured dynamic routing, it might not seem much configuration to you as compared to static routing, but let's imagine that we had more routers over here, like in this way, and you needed to configure static routes on all of these routers. So you can very well imagine that it would become very cumbersome. But in case of dynamic routing, you will see that it is just a couple of commands onto this router as well, onto this, this or this and all the networks connected on with all of these routers will be visible to each and every one. So that's the real benefit as I have already mentioned. So now let's quickly configure the routers for OSPF which is the routing protocol that we are going to use. And one more thing is that all of these routers and all of their interfaces, I am going to configure them into area 0, which is the backbone area for OSP protocol. So let's quickly bring up the terminals. I have already configured this Cisco router with OSP protocol. Now I am going to do the OSP configuration on both of these Juniper routers. So let's bring up the interface and let's have a look at the configuration. The IP addressing is the same as that of static routing that we had seen earlier. And besides that, there is no much information. So to configure the static route or, or, or I should say the dynamic routing for OSPF, we type in set protocols OSPF. And after that, the area, which is zero, and the interfaces that we want to include in that area. In this case, I want all of the interfaces to be belonging to area number zero. Now also, I want that loopback zero interface should belong to area zero, but it should not send routing advertisements, although, although it cannot send out of the interface, but within the router, itself it should not send the routing updates or the LSAs towards the loopback interface. So I should disable that 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 uh, LSA is to be flooded towards the loopback interface. And the command to do that is loopback zero. I type in disable and also we can set the router ID of Junos1 by typing in set protocols OSPF and then the router ID or I believe router ID is in the global configuration. So I go into routing options and I type in router ID, which is the loopback interface that we want to assign. So I type in 2.2.2.2. And now let's show you the configuration that we have just done. So only a couple of commands just define the router ID so that it should be unique across the domain. The OSPF protocol parameters area zero has been defined. It should run all the interfaces but the LSAs should not be sent onto the loopback zero interface because there is no other neighbor connected with the loopback interface. And that's it, all the information that is needed to be, that was needed to be done as far as Junos 1 was concerned. Since Junos 1 is already connected via E1 interface with router number one. So let's see if we have got the neighbor relationship established with the router one. So I type in run show OSPF and then the neighbors and it is saying that OSPF instance is not running. So why is not running? 
I did not commit the configuration, did I? So let's commit it. And now the instance is running and uh, it has already formed a relationship with the neighbor which is R1 because we can see that it has got the IP address of its neighbor and the state is full. So if I type in run show route, we should see the address table entry of the loopback interface of R1 which is learned via OSPF. We have not configured any static route. Now this route is being learned through OSPF and if router 1 had many many inter interfaces and networks connected with it and all of them had been enabled with OSP protocol then we would have seen a lot many networks over here coming from router 1 without defining any static routes using the OSPF protocol. Also you can see that the preference value is being shown as of 10. Now let's also come on to Genos 2 and configure the OSP protocol on this particular router as well. First configure the router ID which is 1.1.1.1 .1 and then type in set protocols OSPF then area that it belongs to and then the interfaces that it should run on but for loopback 0 we should ideally disable it now let's do a commit and now if we check the neighbors of Junos 1 that now it should ideally have the Junos 2 as well as its neighbor now we see that Junos 1 and Junos 2 are connected via two links so two neighbor relationships have been formed. One is via EM0 link and the other one is via EM3 link. Now let's head over to Genos2 and see what routing table entries it has got. So I type in show route and we see that router one do back address. It has been learned via two interfaces via 2111 and 2119 because both of them are of equal cost which is 3 and likewise the network 101110 which is connected onto this side of Junos 1 it has also been learned via two interfaces because they both have the same cost to reach to that network or maybe this one which is 2. Similarly for reaching to red network number 21114 which is over here we see that we have got two possible routes via 2111 and 2119 but at the moment the active route is the bottom one Why, in case of this one the active route was 2111. So really is the router discretion that which route it chooses to forward the packet to and if I do a ping let's say ping the loopback interface which is 3.3.3.3 we see that we have the connectivity now let me show you the true functionality of routing protocols although you, you, you have already seen it and you have guessed it but let me show you Let's just have a look at the quick configuration. This is the Junos 2 configuration that we are seeing at the moment. And we have not defined any route related to the loopback address of router number 1. Now let's head over to router number 1 with the Cisco router. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to add an other loopback interface. Let's say loopback 1 and give it an other IP address and we will see that this IP address is immediately advertised to route to Junos 1 router and from Junos 1 router it will be advertised to Junos 2 router. So we really did not do not need to do any configuration on both of those routers and they will automatically come to know an other network that we are going to add on router number 1. So the true benefit of routing protocols is that it takes off a lot of load of administrators 
or as we call it administrative overhead so let's just give it an IP address of let's say 3.3.3.1 with a submit mask of 32 now once we do that and if I come on to router number Junos 2 which is over here we should ideally see the route the new route learned through OSPF protocol which we see over here so no need to configure anything on the two routers they have learned this information via the OSPF routing protocol now let's have a look at the OSPF database so I type in run show OSPF then the keyword is database and I press enter and since all of these three routers are in the same area so they should have the same topological view of area 0 so I type in enter and we see that we have got LSA type 1 and also LSA type 2 entries into this router. Now we know that I had mentioned about this LSA types router 1 LSA type 1 belongs to the router LSA the advertising router is 111 2 is itself or the other one and 3 is the Cisco router also we can see that the network LSA which is generated by the designated router it is being generated by the Junos 1 router who has the loopback IP address as 2222 now if we have a detailed look at it and uh, if I type in let's say router and the advertising router which is 2222 or detail now this this detailed database information that has been learned by a Junos 2 and it has been learned by the LSAs that have been sent via Junos 1 so if I come on to here and I just want to show you that let's have a look at this one this entry over here and also this entry over here so really a detailed look about the topology in the Junos2 database. Now let's have a look at the routing table one more time for entry either 3331 or 3333 and we see that at the moment for loopback 3331 this router is going to send the traffic to 2119 while for 3333 it is going to send the traffic to 2111 so what we can do is that I can or maybe I need to append run with it I'm going to ping the 3.3.3.1 interface which will be using 21119 next top IP address so let's ping it and while the ping is going on I am going to disable this 21119 interface on Junos 1 so let's just do that I edit the interface which is EM3 and I do a set then disable let me just double verify it okay so the ping is going on I am gonna disable this interface so that the traffic is routed via other next hop 
I have committed the changes and you see the ping was momentarily stopped and now it has started again and now if I have a look at the router table again we should see that the entry in the routing table for next stop will be changed to 2111 because now the 2119 interface is down so we see that against 33331 the entry has changed to 2111 and also the other path is not available anymore because now that is down so that is all about the configuration of ospf on juniper routers now ospf is a is a pretty i would say amazing protocol which is widely used in the industry and it is really powerful in a sense that it it, it supports a very large topology of routers now we are using at the moment only for three routers but it can support theoretically hundreds of routers so if you want to have make up your own topology maybe in emulator you can use multiple routers maybe four or five routers and you can add many many networks onto these routers using loopback interfaces and you will see that the true benefit of reaching to those networks as compared to static route is via dynamic routing like the one that we have configured using OSPF. I have configured the basic OSPF with a couple of routers in single area and that is all what is required as far as GNCIA certification is concerned. However, in actual deployments, OSPF is implemented with a lot more options like multiple areas to break the SPF domain and different network types like point-to-point -point or broadcast. But that all is beyond the scope of this course. These implementation details are covered in GNCIS or other advanced courses. I hope you have enjoyed learning the dynamic routing and its implementation using OSPF and I would like to thank you for viewing.